Uh, warmest greetings from South Wales. My name is Sean and I'm God Squad's International President and welcome to our weekly reflection from the Gospels. And this week it sees me return to the parable of the sower, uh, looking at it from Matthew's Gospel chapter 13 and the first nine verses. And I actually last spoke on this story back in January this year but that was from Mark's Gospel chapter 4 and the first 20 verses. So here's today's reading from Matthew 13. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake and such large crowds had gathered around him that he got into a boat and he sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed and as he was scattering the seed some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil and it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns which grew up and choked the plants and still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears let them hear. Now in that reflection last January from Mark's Gospel, I pondered a lot on how indiscriminate the farmer spread the seed. Nowhere was forgotten and the reality that some seed grew and some didn't. I also asked important questions about how we allow the seed, the word of God, to grow in our lives. What chokes our hearing of this word? What strangles our very discipleship? What are the things that squeeze the life out of our desire to follow Jesus? And I'd encourage you to go back and have a listen to that reflection from last January. But what should we allow our ears to hear today in these moments that will help us keep going in our road of following Christ? And as we read on from these first nine verses in Matthew 13, from verse 18, Jesus actually gives an explanation to this parable. And I want to reflect on what Jesus says in verse 23. And it says this, The seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. So the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. So, how often do we only actually truly hear what we want to hear? How easy do we find it to be challenged in our understanding of things? Because, well, we all know that we can become very fixed in our ways and we only actually hear what's pleasing to our ears a lot of the time. But for a seed to produce a harvest, it needs to be watered and nurtured. It would need to be challenged. For our life on the road with Jesus to produce some evidence of fruit, we need to at least be prepared to hear, to listen intently. We need to be prepared to be continually challenged along the whole of the road, not just at the beginning, maybe a conversion experience, but an ongoing life of listening and transformation. And when we're open to the kingdom of God, our attitudes will be challenged, maybe on money and wealth, on matters of race or social status and standing, or how we judge others, how we disagree, how we make peace. Eventually, these values of the kingdom of God will challenge us in all aspects of our life and behavior. Are we actually open to hearing well enough to the call of Christ for our understanding to change? Are we prepared to understand in a way that goes beyond an academic understanding that maybe will produce a complete change of heart and mind and direction in our lives? Are we prepared to hear and understand in a way that can respond to Christ with a genuine, my Lord and my God? For when we do, we will think and behave differently. We will produce fruit that reflects the kingdom of God. We'll perhaps learn to love those we disagree with. We'll learn to let God be the judge when we actually feel like throwing stones or seeking revenge. 
we will deal with the planks in our own eyes before pointing out the specks of dust in others. And maybe we'll learn to let go of the idea that we're always right. And we'll know that there's always more to learn. And maybe learning from those we think unlikely sources. And this challenge may actually begin with those we choose to listen to. We're surrounded by many voices and charisma and volume don't always make for wise words. And my most recent reflection on the 23rd of June tried to give some advice on this. Now the New Testament is full of unlikely carriers of the fruit of the kingdom of God. And Jesus himself was not the warrior deliverer from the oppressive Roman Empire that many had hoped for. So they actually ignored this prophet in rags that brought hope in their fearful world. And John the Baptist was hardly a prime candidate and his fruit was cut down in his prime and he was not actually heard for very long. Jesus' mother Mary, the misfit 12, the naked madman near the pig farm, Zacchaeus, the dying thief next to Jesus, and Mary Magdalene may not have been the smartest of people, unlike the Apostle Paul who was unbelievably smart, but they all had this in common. They heard, they understood, they allowed that hearing and that understanding to affect the very core of who they were and what they believed and ultimately how they lived. And my challenge to us all is this, what are we hearing right now? Are we open to our understanding of the kingdom of God, of the gospel of Jesus being challenged? Do we make ourselves available to actually hear? Maybe in prayer, in the reading of scripture, within the fellowship of a church community, or in the stillness and the quiet around us. And in doing so, we open ourselves up to the potential of watering the seeds of faith within our heart. The promise of Jesus is that when we hear, and when we understand the words of the kingdom of God, when we absorb them into the very core of our being, there will be fruit of that same kingdom of God. Faith expressed in love, if you like, as Paul wrote in Galatians. When we walk this road with Christ and we dare to declare, my Lord and my God, and truly live in response to this, we have begun to know what it is to actually hear and understand. And in closing, it's also good to remember that some of that fruit of the kingdom of God in our lives includes not actually judging who is the most fruitful to. So cheers. God bless. Diochenbach.